Hello there. Welcome to another visual how-to. My name is Patrick Tissigem. I'm a managing partner for a company called U2U. And within this session, I'm going to illustrate and explain how to build a simple custom approval workflow. And we'll use Microsoft InfoPal 2007 forms as a way to interact during the workflow with the users. This slide here shows you the different steps and components that are involved within the simple custom approval workflow. So first of all, the workflow template is associated to a list library or a content type. And during the association, you can display an InfoPod form, which is called the association form. This form can be used to capture settings for parameters that you want to use within the workflow. Next, when the workflow is started or initiated, either manually or by an event triggered in the container, you can again show an InfoPod form, which is called the initiation form. And this can be used to capture additional data from the user. Both the association form and the initiation form must have the same namespace for the data. And within the workflow, the data entered within the forms is made available by a property called initiation data that is exposed by the SP workflow properties object. While the workflow is running, tasks will be created and assigned to people. And these tasks are stored as normal task items in a SharePoint task list. And when people are going to edit their tasks, you can again show an InfoPod form, which is called the edit task form, and capture again some additional data and allow people to approve, reject, complete the task. Anything that has been entered here in the form is accessible via the extended properties property at the level of the SP workflow task properties clause in the coda. So let me show you how we construct the different InfoPod templates. The first one is the association template. So if we open it up in design mode, what you will see is that it's a very simple form with one view and we capture the name of the manager. If we look at the data source, you will see that we um, have two fields, one for storing the name of the manager and one for storing comments. And then we have the button. So when uh, the user has finished entering the data, he or she can click the button and what we need to do is we need to create a rule with two actions. One action is a submit using a data connection where we are going to send the data back to the hosting application. And that is the first action. And the second action is the closing of the form. The second template, the initiation form, is created by saving this association template as um, the initiation template. So I have done this already. So here is the result of that save as. And let's have a look at the design mode. And uh, we have a view with the capturing of the commands. And we have a data source, which is, of course, exactly the same as the one you saw in the previous InfoPod template. The OK button has the same rule. You submit again to the hosting application and you close the form. The third and final InfoPod template is the task edit form. And this is a new one. It's not based on any of the previous templates. So it has its own namespace and data source with two fields, commands, so proof of commands and task status. And the view allows users to enter the approver comments. And when a button is clicked, either the approve or reject button, what will happen is we will pretty much do the same steps as before. We're going to submit to our hosting application. But we do one more thing, and that is we are setting the value of that task status field, either to approved or rejected. So let's have a look at what goes on here in Visual Studio.net where I have my workflow project already modeled. So I have within the designer 
the different activities that we need to go through. And it's pretty simple. We have a task that will be created. We will wait until the task status has been changed, either to approved or rejected, and then we complete the task. For each of the activities you see here on the designer, you have to set a number of properties. So for example, for the first activity, you have to set the correlation token, the workflow token, and we have to hook it up with a method within the code behind class that will be called. You do the same thing for create task, but now the correlation token is set to task token. And then for the create task, you also have the method invoking, and then two properties that are mapped, the task ID and the task properties, and you can map these properties either to an existing member or to a new member that is generated on the fly here by the dialog. And then we have the while activity, and the while activity has a property called condition. So we're going to check a code condition. We have the on task changed, where we have the after properties and before properties that have to be bound to members in the code behind clause. We have the invoke. And for the complete task activity, pretty much the same type of configuration. Now let's have a look where in the code we interact with our InfoPod forms. The first place is the on workflow activated event handler, yeah, where the data that was entered by the user in both the association form as well as the initiation form is flowing into our workflow via the initiation data property at the level of the workflow properties. So we load all of that XML in memory, and then we retrieve via an XPOT statement the value of, in our case, the manager and the commands field. The second place where we interact with InfoPath data is here in the on task changed where we are going to interact with the task edit form that is displayed. And the way you can retrieve the value of the data entered within the form by using the extended properties property of the after properties or the SP workflow task properties type. So we, we can simply retrieve the value of task status or over here we have another line where we communicate with the form and we retrieve the approver commands. For the deployment, what we need to do with our InfoPod templates is we need to publish them one by one. And you publish your InfoPod templates to a network folder. And we do this by using the publishing wizard. You select to a network location and you typically are going to have the templates made available as a subfolder of your features folder. We go for next, and then the alternate access location needs to be blank, and then we just uh, click next and finish the whole deployment. The custom workflow created here is going to result in a .NET assembly that has to be deployed in the global assembly cache. And we're going to make available the workflow template as a feature scoped at the level of the site collection. Now, what are the specific things involving the InfoPod templates that we have created? First of all, in the feature.xml, you have a property element with a key register forms that will point SharePoint to the subdirectory within the features folder where you have published your InfoPod templates. The second file of your feature is the workflow.xml, where you have here within the metadata element, each of the templates associated to their proper form URM. So we have one for the association, and you give here the ID of the InfoPod template, and you see that for the association, as well as for the init, we have the same namespace, and then we have also the one for task, so the task edit form. We only have one task. This concludes the visual how-to. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you next time.